megaloblastic anemia is called megaloblastic anemia due to presence of megaloblast seen in the bone marrow of this patient now mega wherever we use the term mega it means large very large huge humongous gigantic something like mega star uh, mega power word megawatt power plant so similarly mega low blast basically it means that there is a very large uh, erythroblast erythroid precursors red blood cells precursors is present in this condition in the bone marrow these are not seen in the peripheral blood but it's seen in the bone marrow and that's why we call it megaloblastic anemia. In this Insta lecture number 96, we try to explain three key concepts about the megaloblastic anemia. Firstly, we would explain you that what is the difference between the term macrocytic anemia and megaloblastic anemia, and why all megaloblastic anemia are macrocytic anemia, but not necessarily all macrocytic anemia are megaloblastic anemia. Concept number two, I would explain that why megaloblastic anemia, this megaloblast or macrocytes are seen. And the third key concept which I'll be dealing at the end is that megaloblastic anemia not only affects the RBC cell uh, precursors, basically it results in pancytopenia. It can result in pancytopenia, affecting all three cell lines. And it can affect any rapidly dividing cell line. So that is the third concept I, which I would explain. So let's start with the first one uh, that the concept of the macrocytic anemia and the concept of megaloblastic anemia. And I'll go to the board and in the meantime, I'd like to tell you that you have heard about the term macrocytic, microcytic and normocytic anemia. And I hope you already know that what are these terms made of. Basically, we can classify the anemia on the basis of MCV, mean corpuscular volume. That means the average size of a RBC. And usually it can be divided, this anemia can be divided into three types. That is microcytic, microcytic, micro means small, cytic means cell, normocytic, normal means normal, and macrocytic. Macro means big. Now, this is basically based on the MCV value, the femtoliter. Usually, if the RBC size in the condition is less than 80 femtoliter, we usually call femtoliter means uh, femto is an unit uh, 10 to the power minus 15. So, it's a very, very small fraction of the liter. So if the RBC size is less than 80 femtoliter, we call that microcytic anemia. If the RBC cell size is smaller, for example, we know iron deficiency anemia, anemia of chronic disease, cereloplastic anemia, and thalassemia, they can present with the microcytic anemia. Normocytic anemia means usually the RBC's volume is between 80 to 100 femtoliter. 80 to 100 FL femtoliter. Uh, and usually the conditions, typical example would be uh, hemolytic anemia. That usually in this condition, the RB cells are the normal range because there is accelerated destruction occurring in the outside of the bone marrow. There is only quick destruction occurring in RBC. So there's no reason for it to have altered cell size. And a group of anemia that is called macrocytic anemia because their cell size is usually greater than 100 femtoliter. So you can think in this way that this one, the RBC cells are, would be small like this. This would be normal like this, and this would be big like this. So that, that depending on the mean corpuscular volume, that are the sizes between 80 to 100 femtoliter or greater than 100 femtoliter or less than 80 femtoliter, we can divide into microcytic, normocytic, and the macrocytic. Now, uh, this concept comes that a key type of macrocytic anemia is megaloblastic anemia. But not necessarily all types of macrocytic anemia are megaloblastic anemia. So if I clear this thing, I would like to tell you that 
macrocytic anemia could be of megaloblastic subtype and non megaloblastic so it would be one it would be megaloblastic another uh, is non megaloblastic the idea is this that under this non megaloblastic which one comes the example would be liver disease associated or hypothyroidism associated this kind of anemia could be seen macrocytic anemia could be seen they are non megaloblastic uh, and megaloblastic now i focus at the concept of this that what is megaloblastic anemia now this is the key concept that you need to understand that if the macrocytic anemia is occurring if the macrocytic anemia is occurring due to impaired dna synthesis some abnormality in the dna synthesis we call that type of macrocytic anemia megaloblastic anemia so next question is this that why the impaired dna synthesis occurs uh, answer is this that due to particularly due to vitamin deficiency one is vitamin b12 another is vitamin b9 or folate deficiency so if these two vitamins are deficient that would result in deficient formation of the dna because dna the thymidine in the production of the thymidine which is a building block for the dna these two vitamin b12 and vitamin b9 act as a necessary coenzyme so if you are they are not there you cannot build the thymidine or you cannot build dna just like without butter and paneer you cannot make butter paneer masala similarly if you don't have folate if you don't have cobalamin b12 you cannot make thymidine and you cannot make the dna and now the next important concept comes here that how it impacts and how it leads to the development of the megaloblast formation and the macrocytosis and this is the next thing i'm going to explain on the whiteboard this is a very important concept and you i'll try to simplify this so uh, let me clear this everything so if you look at the rbc development that is uh, from the proethroblast there is a normal blast and then reticulocyte and finally the mature R rbc so what's actually happening that from larger rbc precursors due to repeated cell division smaller size rbc precursors form and ultimately they form into mature rbc which has no nucleus this one is mature form and this is occurring due to repeated cell division where the bigger precursor is progressively developing into the smaller precursors now as you don't have thymidine as you don't have thymidine as you don't have dna the problem is this that these precursor cells their cytoplasm tends to mature normally but their nucleus cannot mature because that requires dna so obviously as the there is a, this is called there is a technical term used for this this is called nucleocytoplasmic asynchrony that means that cytoplasm is developing at a normal pace but new nucleus cannot de develop at the same pace it cannot match up with its pace and there is a uh, asynchrony there in the development and as it is what happening that this cytoplasm is developing but this new nucleus their development is impaired and as a result the cells cannot divide properly the cell division the replication of the cell division cannot happen properly so the precursors rbc precursors they tend to stay in the large mega sized cells and these blast or erythroblast which are seen in the bone marrow due to their presence we call it megaloblastic anemia typically they have uh, a kind of opened up reticular chromatin because as the rbc precursors mature they should have a clumped chromatin but they don't as they are not maturing due to the lack of dna obviously they cannot they are having this kind of immature form of chromatin and these uh, these blasts 
these erythroid precursors actually we call them megaloblasts. They are not seen in the peripheral blood, by the way. Uh, we see them in the bone marrow, the megaloblast. And ultimately, these due to this uh, hindrance, due to this obstacle in the division, what happens? The ultimately the mature cell are form of RBC, which is coming out into the peripheral blood, that is quite big, and we are calling the having more than 100 femtoliter. So we are calling them macrocytes. Macro means bigger and site means cell. So, and also the next important concept that I would like to explain here, this is the third important concept, that this process, it does not only affecting the RBCs. This process is only affecting all the three cell lines. So basically this impairment in the cell division or the growth is not only affecting RBC cell line, also affect WBC cell line also affect platelet, that is megacarocyte cell line. So this condition, megaloblastic anemia, can present with pan-cytopenia. Pan means all, cyto means cell, and penia means deficiency. Penia comes from the name of a Greek goddess, which is of poverty. So it basically means lack of something. So pan-cytopenia, that means all three cell lines are affected in this condition. Another concept that you need to understand that these phenomena, that means the cells are becoming quite big due, due to lack of DNA uh, because there is no thymidine due to the deficiency of the B12 and B9 folate. That's not only uh, occurring in the bone marrow, but also occurring in other places where there's a fast replication of those cells are there, like gastrointestinal epithelium. And as bone marrow is also a place where there is a uh, fast replication occurs of these cells actually, fast growing cells are there. That's why this is also affected most prominently. So altogether, I, in this session, this 96 session, I emphasize on three key concepts on the megaloblastic anemia. That megaloblastic anemia is a, is a distinctive form of macrocytic anemia where the cells RBCs are quite bigger on the peripheral blood. And they are characterized by impaired DNA synthesis because B9 or folate and B12 is required for the DNA synthesis, the thymidine synthesis. So when they are not there, the DNA cannot be synthesized. As the DNA cannot be synthesized, DNA synthesis gets impaired. So nucleus cannot mature normally. So when normally, uh, so when normally the RBCs, their precursors, their maturing in the bone marrow, they basically progressively become smaller in size. But in this case, these divisions are impaired. So a lot of RBC precursors, they remain a big, larger in appearance size, and they remain in the bone marrow. And these erythroid precursors are called megaloblastic, and that's why we call them megaloblastic. And the last concept which I told you that they, they not, not only impact the RBC cell line, they also impact all three cell lines. So they can present with pan cytopenia because all these three precursors, uh, three cell series precursors, that means uh, myeloid, that means WBC, uh, and the platelet that is megakaryocyte, these cell lines that could presence with, could be decreased because this process does not not only affect the RBC cell line but can affect all the three cell lines. What actually happens that as this uh, defective development is occurring, uh, that can result in ineffective erythropoiesis. Another term is also used because many of these erythroid precursors they can die in the bone marrow itself, intramedullary hemolysis occurs. And this process is called ineffective erythropoiesis. This is not exclusive for megaloblastic anemia. You'll be hearing this term in conditions like thalassemia also. So all in all, these are the three key concepts I mentioned that all megaloblastic anemia are macrocytic anemia, but all macrocytic anemia are not megaloblastic anemia. Because I mentioned conditions like liver disease can also cause macrocytosis. And megaloblastic anemia is a distinctive form of macrocytic anemia, which is caused due to impaired DNA synthesis. Second, I told you that megaloblastic anemia is called megaloblastic anemia because they are seen uh, due to the presence of this megaloblast, very large, gigantic blast, erythroid blast, RBC precursors in the bone marrow. And I already explained why they're seen. And the third concept, which I mentioned, that they can also present with pancytopenia. And usually, uh, you on the peripheral blood, I think you already read about them. These are most commonly uh, discussed that they will present with macroevolocytes and some hypersegmented larger cell neutrophils. This would be 
seen in the paper. But I will discuss this on a different session. Thank you very much.